Okay, so hi everyone. This is going to be a recap lesson on some of the content that we did right back at the start of year 12. And today we're going to focus on 1.3.1, which is the start of our changing places topic. And we're gonna look at the relationships and connections that we have with place. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go back and find your changing places folders and I'd like you to go to the start of that folder and see if you can find the notes that we made in those very first few lessons right back in September last year. When we first got you to think about the changing places topic, we asked you to consider what your home place and your home space was. And unfortunately, this can't be Sheffield, although you will find that Sheffield is a place, a city that you end up talking a lot about in uh, the Changing Places topic. This very starting point, though, we are asking you to think about something a little bit more local than that. So your home space, if you remember from your notes, is your locality or your neighbourhood. And I remember doing this in class with you and I remember some of us, um, or for some of us that was uh, Ecclesaw Road, it was the Greystones area. Uh, I know a lot of you live in different places around Sheffield and that local area is the one that you would use if ever you get asked about a home place or a home space um, that you have studied. You'll also see in the yellow box there that you need to know a lot about this home place and you also need to know about an, another contrasting local place and that doesn't mean local to you but it means local small area to somebody else, somebody else that might live there. And again thinking back to that first lesson in September I will have asked perhaps students that don't live in the same local areas to the majority of you, perhaps the students that live in the rural areas and come from the Peak District, for them to tell you about their local area and their home place. So in your folder you should find that you've got a table that shows you all of your notes about your home place and then all of the notes about somebody else's location. Now if you don't have that, don't worry because this PowerPoint is going to get you to think about your home place again and it's also going to briefly recap some of the options that you could use for that contrasting place if you don't have a contrasting place from somebody in our class from last year. Okay, so if you ever get asked to define the term place, which you could very well do so at the start of an essay for a 15 mark question or even an 8 mark question in changing places. A place is a portion of geographic space to which meaning has been given by people. Places mean something to people. That's how they become more than just a location on a map. And different places have different characteristics and they change over time too. If you think back to that, again, that very first lesson, I will have got you to think about the characteristics that define places. And I remember perhaps doing this as a spider diagram on the board where you gave some brilliant ideas of what can make up a place and how it can be different from one place to another. It could be that a place is um, defined by its demographic, so it's a large place, it has a huge population size and structure. It could be defined by its socio-economic characteristics, for example its employment and education opportunities, its income, health, crime rates. A place could also be defined because of its culture, because of religion, customs. It could be defined by its physical geography. Often people say that Sheffield is defined by its physical geography of having seven hills and five rivers. It could be defined by the built environment, by what the land is used for, by building types and if it's particularly densely or sparsely populated. 
or it could be defined by political reasons as well. The role of government and council that might have really shaped the way that a place feels and, and has a sense of place to the people that live there. We do get you to think about Sheffield here in order to understand what makes a place distinct from others because Sheffield obviously has lots of defining features to it as does every other major city across the UK. So let's think back to your home place. In your notes you should have written down what your home place is. Yes we know it's Sheffield but what is your smaller local area where you were perhaps brought up in or you have moved to. For some of you you might have more than one home place but for a lot of you it might be that you've spent most of your time in one particular house or one particular area especially whilst you've been at school. And that's the one that hopefully you'll be able to remember to write about in an exam. Now for your home place, you have to know the demographic features. So that means how is it made up? Who lives there? What age are people? Has it got anything particularly different about it? So for example, has it in your opinion or according to the Office for National Statistics got lots of old people living there? Or is it a relatively young population? Is it a population whereby lots of young people are moving into it to start families and live in what are perceived as better areas for schools? Would you classify your area as relatively affluent? Or do you experience deprivation in your local home place? What are the cultural characteristics? So, for example, is there different evidence of religion in your area and worship that takes place? Is there evidence of a mixture of communities in your local area or has that changed recently? And that last little sentence that I've said there is also really important. For your home place, you've got to know how it has changed over time. And that might be just in your lifetime, it might be if you've been uh, luck luckily enough to ask your parents how an area might have changed, or it might be just in the last few years that you've noticed new shops being built, new people moving into that area or out. Okay, so you've got to really think about what defines your home place and how it has changed. And what I would like you to do once you've watched this video is just see, I'm going to attach the PowerPoint, see if you can answer these questions. We will have done this at the time, but hopefully it'll just get you to think again about your home place. And with the current crisis and pandemic that we're all living through, you might have noticed that your place has changed really recently too. Has the area become more connected? I know where I live in Walkley. All of a sudden, I'm finding that I'm speaking to the neighbours more. We're pulling together in order to uh, go to the shops and things like that. Has the community spirit changed? You can include this crisis, the pandemic, into your answers now. In fact, it would be really good if you could think about how something like this has perhaps changed your local area. Have you found that actually during times like this that everybody's kind of shut the front doors and actually this is huge evidence that the place that you live in doesn't really have a, a community spirit. Maybe that's because there's so much, uh, so much evidence of people moving in and out of the area that people don't know each other like they perhaps used to. Okay, so have a think about that. How has your place changed over time? What's caused these changes? What flows of people have you got? Do you live in an area that's been affected by a process such as studentification? Have you got students that are, are living nearby that go to Sheffield Hallam and, and Sheffield Uni? Have you had any investment come into your local area? Has there been a new Tesco bill? Has there been evidence of FDI, that foreign influence of investment? Okay, and do you think that the area that you live in might mean different things to different people? So for you, do you really take advantage of the local leisure facilities or the um, shops that sell all the different globalised products? 
And does your next door neighbour who's a little bit older and has perhaps lived there a really long time, do they not appreciate the new shops and would they much rather have local village shops? So just have a think about that. Okay, so once you've understood the function of your local place, what I'd then like you to think about is how you could perhaps contrast that to another place if you have ever had to in an exam. Now, in your notes, you should have evidence of a place called Foster City in California. This is a contrasting place, trust me, to the place that, that you live in. It is a very specific and quite peculiar place. It's characterised by the population that lives there. It is extremely affluent. Uh, it was a planned settlement built on reclaimed marshland just off the western shore of San Francisco Bay. And as you can see from the date there, 1958, it is a really newly built place, which is often the case in uh, the United States. It is very contrasting, it is very different. If you can remember this, you may wish to talk about it in an exam question. If you can't and you've got notes in your folders about a Peak District contrasting place, then that's absolutely fine. And something that I was reading in the revision guide the other day said, it could also be a place from field studies. So I was thinking to myself, of course, you could always talk about Clamberis, or uh, Bettersea Coid, where we went on the field trip. You could talk about those rural areas as contrasting places to where you live. Really remote, you know, although one similarity is the decline of industry, I suppose, the decline of the slate industry, just like we, you might have experienced the decline of the steel industry in your local area here in Sheffield. But obviously very different access to transport and public services over in those rural villages of Wales. So you can use that as a contrasting place or you can use this example here, Foster City, which we've made notes on from the textbook at the time. There are some characteristics that define uh, Foster City over in America, just off the western coast of um, western shore sorry, of San Francisco. And it does have some very specific features to it. It's distinct, it's an urban area. It's actually a tidal water course. The thing that I think stands out for me, it's mostly medium to high earner residents. It's a very, very affluent area. It was purpose built to serve Silicon Valley. So a lot of people that live in this place uh, daily commute to the Silicon Valley headquarters. And we actually looked at the Silicon Valley, didn't we, when we studied uh, the Quaternary Industry case study. It is certainly multicultural in Foster City so have a think about that is that something that's similar or different to the area that you live in is your home place multicultural to what extent is it multicultural and there you go I think this astounded us all when we um, when we read it for the first time the average income and the average house price over there in Foster City that's something that you could perhaps compare of your home place the average house price the average earnings. Okay, and so the last thing that I want to say before I'm going to ask you to look at something um, for me today is there are many, many factors, as we've already said, that can shape and change the identity and characteristics of place. And these can be really important and influencing on some places and not on others. So, for example, some areas get really shaped by migrants moving in to live or work and can really change the culture of, of a place. Some areas are really affected by the flow of resources. Some areas are really affected by the flow of money and investment. For example, FDI that can significantly change regions around the UK. It could be the flows of ideas end up in certain places. Ideas coming from universities start to lead to areas becoming like technological hubs like Cambridge. Again, we've looked at Cambridge and we looked at the science parks. 